we're going to be doing, especially on uh, Easter Sunday, we're going to be showcasing a very salon-friendly men's style. And I'm going to be taking you through working with scissors and also working with the clippers. So tonight I'm going to be using Andes Clippers. I'm also a global Andes educator. And I'm based in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland, where I'll also uh, have my training studio and also I'll have another academy in Nottingham, England as well. So, so I'm very excited to be here for the second time showcasing something that's going to be a very friendly look that's great for hairdressers, for barbers, creating uh, a bit more of like a modern men's style. So for the essence of time, I actually already started pre-cutting the one side. Uh, then you'll see that I'm going to be taking you through, especially for the demonstration, I'll be taking you through step by step on creating almost a fade underneath. And then I'm going to be working with the top panel with scissors, working with a bit of disconnection. And we're going to be really talking about how um, why I parted it here as, as opposed to there, and so forth. As we kind of take a look in the back area, it's a bit more of like an offset triangle section, okay? So ideally, my model Nathaniel tends to like to wear the hair going this way. So that's why I kind of took it up a little bit higher, still working with the point in the crown for the disconnected area, and you'll see I disconnected this panel throughout here on this side where the head tends to round off. Now, how do we find out how that area kind of rounds off or where to put that disconnection? Well, if I had taken that disconnection section up higher, he will end up just having a very thin amount of hair and also be very rounded here. Now, if I would have kept it too low, it would have looked like he was wearing a hat. So, the best thing is really going into the middle of the karate ridge. And so, how do we tell? By having your comb, this following where it starts to round off, that's where we know where we disconnect it. Okay. So, so, right now, I'm going to be starting the underneath here first, working with um, basically creating that fade. Now, You'll see that, especially for some of you that may be starting off with clippers or, you know, there's many different ways to do a fade, okay? So tonight, I'm just gonna try and do it a very, almost like a simplistic way and also explain step by step exactly why, why I'm doing it and also the way how to do it as well. So, but before I get started with the hair cutting, we also have my lovely camera person here. Her name is Jennifer. Hello. So she'll be, she's going to be your voice. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free uh, to ask questions. And she's, Jennifer is here to help as well. So a lot right. of people saying hello just now. Oh, perfect. So a big hello to everyone. So yes, I'm very excited uh, to be here. Like I said, I was here. Uh, we did a, a creative haircut on a mannequin uh, about, I think it was about a month ago. And each month, I'm going to be showcasing um, free live video tutorials here on Hairbrains. So I'm so excited. So Now, for tonight's lesson, now we're going to be establishing almost a guideline here. So primarily, there's three different ways you can do it. Now, in this case, because the hair is just a wee bit longer here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be creating that guideline with a horizontal section, working with my scissors. Okay, so I'm going to be doing scissor cutting right here to establish my guide. Now, the other two ways you can go about it. Now, if it was just a, just a little bit shorter, you can also do clipper over comb to establish that guideline. Now, if it was almost, if it was a little bit shorter, then you can actually use your clippers on a number two attachment comb setting or a 1.5 attachment comb and to establish your guideline first. So you have three different choices primarily. You can also do it with scissor or combing if you want to call that the fourth choice. So, you know, uh, the choice is yours. That's the beautiful thing about being a barber or a hairdresser is there's no exact right or wrong way of doing it because it's all about the end result. And that's the beautiful thing. So, so tonight I want to show you maybe possibly different ways uh, to approach a men's haircut. Especially if it's going to be a little bit more of a salon friendly technique. So, what I'll be doing first, establishing my guideline. Now the way I'm also, a little trick that I like to do, if you see my small finger 
is balancing on Nathaniel's head. That's keeping me a little bit more steady, you know. As I'm getting older, <laughs> my hand low shakes. So I want to make sure I'm keeping steady there. So, and I'll be creating, working with inside my fingers, working with horizontal section. Now, what I also would like to do is keep my elbow to my rib cage. So it keeps me, I want to try and keep a bit more of a, a square shape here to compensate the roundness of the head. So by keeping your elbow to your rib cage, it keeps you steady instead of rounding him off there. So it's a little trick you can do. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free. I'm very excited to be here, especially here on a, on a Sunday. Uh, which is really exciting, you know, the, uh, getting ready for our, our courses starting tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so, and it's great to see all my fellow Americans. So, very excited to, to see everyone. So. so, a big shout out to everyone. So. Okay, so I first established a guideline now. And if you can see, it's what it is. Um, I want to establish a guideline right where the head tends to round off because that will also be part of my blending area. Now, in this case here, um, it's not so much everything's gonna be dramatically blended, okay, because I am working with disconnection, and disconnection is technically is where two areas do not technically meet or join. So I will be working with more of like a, kind of like a texturizing way to blend in the hair later on, so. But for now, let me focus on the fading itself. Now, what I'll be doing as well, I want to make sure this is properly dry here, so making sure. Just drying that off, make sure it's not really overly, overly wet, it's just a tiny bit of moisture in there. So I just want to make sure that's properly dry. You can either dry with your flat brush, or you can actually just dry it quickly with your comb. Just close to yours, depending on the length of the hair. Now, because the hair is a little bit longer, I'm actually going to be using two tools in my hands. I'm going to be using my cutting comb. Now, the reason why is because since the hair is longer, I need to try and control that hair. Um, and also, when I'm using the clippers, you'll see I'm going to be having the comb control the hair and keeping the hair down. Now, <clears throat> so, I will have the clipper in my hand, and what I'm going to be doing is, I'm actually going to be starting off with my guideline with the number three attachment comb. Now, if we see it here, if you see number three, and what that means is, Okay, so whenever we see the primary numbers on these clipper attachment guards, what they mean is a number three means you, when you cut the hair, it gets cut to three weeks of growth. Yeah. So if you use a number two, it means two weeks of growth. Or number one, one week of growth. Now that's kind of like the old school terminology, so when it first started. Now, hair grows a minimum of about a half an inch per month. So that's why it's quite, it's quite clever that we use attachment combs with almost a number system to let, you know, it helps clients realize, oh, what number they need when they go to the barbers to get their hair cut. So in this case here, I put number three because I will be going all the way through, making sure I have the comb in my hands. I'm going to be doing on a closed setting. And the motion that I'll be doing so the way I'm going to be doing is working with more um, arm movement going straight up the head. Um, the reason why what I'm doing is I'm kind of like in a, in a way of kind of like stretching out that fade. So what that means is by using the arm, it goes from a number three upwards. So I'm going to do continue. Make sure I have that comb. Right. So Jennifer, is there any questions from the audience at all? Uh, no. Anything I need to know? No. Or is anyone watching? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, really? Well, thank God. I don't get fired from, from my second day at work. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so what I'm then going to be doing, okay, so that's just kind of like a basic guide here. Now, what I need to do as well, so in this case here, um, I will be actually using my triggers, I will be actually just doing creating them with an outline here first. So that will kind of give me an idea of when I'm working with the, the trimmers uh, or creating the haircut, where almost like my stopping point is. As we see in modern men's barbering, uh, we like to see a slight bit, tiny bit of a heavier outline to give really to enhance the sharp features of your gentleman. So in this case here, I'll be using a, a T outliner blade. If you see here, it's called a T blade because it looks like a T. And then what I'll be doing is kind of working a bit more of a, a rounded shape of the perimeter. Now, I'm not gonna go too, I don't wanna go too, too deep. Working around. And you can also use the either side. Um, it's, you wouldn't wanna use the full blade because it's kind of like, um, it's like drawing. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna be going around Anisha asks if you could repeat the guard knowledge of what you explained of how many months it grows out. Yeah, of course, yeah. So hair grows a half an inch per month on the average person. And I know there's always above average people, God bless them, you know. But hair grows an average half an inch or a centimeter per month. So what that means is, so on the attachment combs, if you see a number three, so what happens is when I put this onto the clipper and I cut the hair, it actually cuts it to three weeks of growth. So which is 10 millimeter or um, three eighths of an inch. Sorry, it's, it's been so long since I've lived in America. I forgot what the inches and the, the sizes mean. I tend to talk in millimeters. And uh, yeah, so, um, so right now I use the number three, which is 10 millimeter or three eighths of an inch, uh, which is three weeks of growth. Okay. So hopefully that helped answer your question then. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to go back here. And like I said, I'm just going to really just work this a bit more rounded. Very gentle. Like I said, I'm not going to go, I will be cleaning that up at a later stage. This is just a basic outline shape. You can just turn this around and just kind of clean this up a little bit. Now, ideally, what you're trying to do is take it to the corner of the eyebrow bone, and then, ideally, if you see, it's like a little triangle. So that is the widest part of the curve or the outlining, and going through here to the corner of the widest part of the eyebrow bone. That's what you're really aiming for. Now, so what I'll be now doing, so I'm gonna be now using a fade brush. Here we go. So as you see on the opposite side, okay. Now you have a couple choices about doing this. Now, you can actually work with a downgrading technique, which is going from a longer number down to a shorter, or you can do upgrading. Now in this case here, what I'll be doing is I'm actually gonna be using a closed blade setting. I'm gonna be putting into my guideline. Oh, sorry, my baseline, I apologize. Okay. Now, I'm actually just working this around. A great question there, so I hope I answered it okay for you there. Uh, was it Anisha, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I'm very excited to be back here on Hairbrains. Like I said, it's just been, uh, it's been an amazing, amazing time. You know, I've been, I've been a fan of Hairbrains for many, many years. Um, especially when they had, you know, um, especially when they had, the, you know, the website, um, Facebook, everything, you know. Um, so when they first started, especially with Gerard, it was absolutely amazing. So, and of course, seeing a lot of famous. Uh, hair educators here on, on Hairbrain, so it's absolutely been brilliant. 
Um, it's uh, for me. It's just, it's just, it's just like a, I don't know. It's such a privilege to be on here. Um, for myself, it's uh, you know to be able to be here. You know, showcasing uh, my next video. I think I'm going to be doing a wet shave, a live wet shave. So, which I absolutely love doing. So, I'm excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone um, else excited about a wet shave? Um, I'm now going to be doing. A number one attachment comb and I'm actually going to be doing with an open blade and you see now I'm going to be just kind of fading this area here it's gonna be working so yeah just working that you see working with the motion here and then you see you'll see me start blending that out so I'm gonna do an open one Yes, yeah, so these are actually one of my favorite, favorite pairs. Uh, they're actually, um, they were limited edition Supreme Andis Clippers, all right? So they're actually the US Pro. You can actually still get these clippers, uh, but they won't have a Supreme uh, casing. But you can still get them, they're called US Pro Andis Cordless, and they're absolutely amazing. So they're very, they're super lightweight. They're about 25% lighter than a lot of clippers out in the market. So they're absolutely brilliant. So, but yeah, they, uh, they launched them. Uh, they did a collaboration about, uh, I think, oh, oh, when was it? Um, I'd say about, it was probably about three years ago, three or four years ago. And it was a gift from Andis. So I uh, got that for a Christmas present. So, they're, uh, they're, they're really fun to have, you know. So now I'm gonna use a closed number one. And so now I'm actually gonna do shorter movements. So now once again, so I know that there's different ways to do clipper work, all right? Some people start shorter, go up longer. Now this is a great way when you're doing downgrading to kind of work, especially when you're working with a bumpy shaped skull. So if you want to work with any dips or anything like that, it's a great, great way, so. Oh, uh, happy Easter, hello. And even uh, Katrina Thompson. Oh, yeah. Katrina. Good evening, Sarah and Jennifer. <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing is, so this is a 1.5 millimeter, which is a, an Andis, it's called a zero guard. So I'm going to first do it open. And if you start seeing, I'm, I'm going a bit more of the diagonal sections. And we'll close. They're so going this way. It's almost like a crisscross feeling. So I'm gonna to need to work with the color here. So you see, I'm also gonna start using the corners of my clipper blades too. And this is where now you'll see, I'll be using my Andis fade brush. Now, if you see the darker area, there's a little bit more here. I will then be using an open blade. And you see, I'm just gonna be going back over that to really polish it off. Now, if you see a bit of uh, heaviness up here, not to worry, we can, everything can be blended. So you can do your scissor over combing. Um, you can do your clipper over comb. Uh, yeah, your blending scissors. You have different choices. And that's one of the beautiful things we have. So now I'm going to be using an open blade right here. And so now I'm just going to be just going back over with the corners here. Then you'll see 
I'm really going to be going back into it. Mary Jo says, dang, I'll just cut and get the home of those things. <laughs> well, the one thing is with fading. Fading is shading. So the key thing is it's not so much about working with the exact numbers, all right? It's about working with the color. Okay, and so meaning if you ever hear a dark, I see the longer the hair is, the darker it's going to be, you know, hence why it looks so dark up here. Now, because what happens is the light needs to shine through. And that's when the shorter the hair gets, that's when we start seeing scalp exposure. And that's why you'll see at the end, I'm going to do various different type of texturizing techniques to help, you know, working with the blending of the fade. So remember, the word fade comes from how the hair color fades into the skin. Okay. So really kind of going back. So point around here, you see I'm gonna be using, and also it's about using the tools. So right now, because since the head shape is round, I don't wanna be keep on using the full blade, all right, because the blade is square. So if I keep on using a square blade on a round shaped head, you're definitely gonna have corners or weight uh, distribution points. So right now, I wanna go at different angles because then it's like kind of like buffing out the fade or buffing out the, um, the well, the fade itself, you know, working with the head shape. So you might even sometimes, if the, hair, if the head's a little squishy, what I might do is I might actually very gently pick it up a tiny bit. And the thing is as well, um, was it uh, Joanne, is that who said? Um, uh, Mary Jo, Mary. Oh, Mary Jo, yeah. So basically, the one thing is Mary Jo, just keep at it, all right? Once again, we all started off as beginners. And the great thing about Hairbrain is that there's actually, you know, here we have where they, they've been doing free education online for so long, because they only want hairdressers to get better, you know? And it's a, such a great platform. Just remember, sometimes, if you feel with the clipper itself, Try and do it as like, uh, like a pencil eraser. You know, like in school when we use pencils with erasers, we kind of need to get rid of that, what that word. We use the eraser and we went back and forth. Or well, sometimes we made little circles with it. Same thing. Just in a way, you're kind of just buffing that out a little bit. Joe Patelli says, says thank you from Toronto. Oh, you're welcome there. <laughs> Once again, guys, there's so many different ways of fading a haircut, you know, so it's, uh, there's many different ways. It's just about like giving, you know, trying them all, see what works well for you. Cool. Now what I'm doing is just going back over, playing around, and also listen to the hair being cut as well. So playing around, especially with this little lever here, I'm going back and forth to see what areas are working, so forth. Another key thing is step away from your client, really see that shape. So then really take a look at that color, see how that's working out for you. So now what you can do is, as well, so I'm gonna go back over, working with my scissor of a comb technique making sure that I, I can go back over, really see how this area is working out for me. I can revisit the fade later on, especially after I do my scissor work on top. The reason why is because it kind of gives my eyesight a bit of a break. So it's just like, especially when, you know, this is not maybe normal cutting um, conditions for me, meaning I have, you know, studio lights, I have a camera in front of me, uh, I don't necessarily have a, a, a mirror. So what I need to do is sometimes I need to work, you know, work smarter, meaning um, what I'll do is I'll do, I'll finish this here, work on, finish the back, then I'm gonna run to the top and then I'll go back over and check the fade afterwards because my eyes have given me a break from working that close. So it's a great, great way to kind of, because then you can deal with any issues with the fade. So yeah, then you can use your blending scissors. 
Now I call them blending is because like, it's primarily really the only reason I use these scissors. Um, it's just for blending purposes. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just using that just to kind of break into that a little bit here. This, and just see how that little bit of a weight right here. Then we go back and I'm gonna sharpen that up later on. So yeah. But now by working with the scissor comb technique, I'm still actually working with a bit of almost like kind of keeping the comb out a 45 degree angle. Then you'll see the way I'm gonna be approaching, I'll be recreating the same technique, all right, or the same um, options, working with the scissors. But again, we're here we're at our training studio in Edinburgh, Scotland. So, which I'm very, very grateful to be here. And uh, it's actually such a beautiful, beautiful city. So it's been, uh, we've been having the best time, haven't we? So. Okay, so at this point here, what I'm gonna be doing is, gonna be just establishing my guide. I still wanna kinda of keep a little bit of hair here, just above the occipital bone area, by the crown, because I still wanna kinda of keep a little bit of a corner here. Um, so the reason why I want to keep a little bit of a corner here is to make it still a bit more of a, a nicer looking head shape. If I totally round that off, what will happen is we're going to reduce the crown and he, you're going to really enhance the flatness of his head. So I just want to keep this. I'm just going to try and establish and I'm going to do it the same method here. I'm keeping my elbow to my rib cage to help keep this nice and flat here. Okay, so I want to keep a certain amount of weight. Okay, so now great, yeah, cool. So I'm gonna finish off, I'm gonna do the same formation here. So I will be doing a number three attachment comb. Then uh, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna be going more of in a straight up motion. Make sure I have my cutting comb in my hand to help get rid of any loose hairs. Then what I'm then gonna be doing is now I'll be putting my baseline in, working with my zero, which is, a, which is an open, I'm uh, sorry, closed blade with no attachment comb. Uh, another key thing I would like to do is making sure that uh, I pumped up Nathaniel so it's a bit more closer to eye level and also helps keep the shape nice and straight. So. so I want to make sure I'm building up a certain amount of weight here where the crown is. So yeah, I'm, I know I'm using another set. It's another cordless master, which is a limited edition. Um, it's the, the gold one, which I'm absolutely, absolutely in love with. Um, I do love my, my clippers from Atmos. Um, it's, uh, absolutely lovely. So if you like in this one, um, yeah, it's just a tiny bit heavier than the Andis US Pro and uh, cordless. And what I love about this is it just helps, especially because since I'm American, like maybe some of you, uh, where I grew up on the Andis Master Corded. So especially that noise that the clipper makes, um, that tinging noise, which uh, I, absolutely, I absolutely love. So it lets me know when the hair is being cut. So it's a great, a great, um, great, Part of the clipper just helps. There we go. 
Sean is asking what was the first clipper name of the Supreme one. Okay, so that's the actual and this US Pro cordless. So it's a US Pro. So they still make it, but it's um it's gray. And uh, but yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. So the Andis Supreme collection that was that was about um, I say about three to four years ago. And because I'm an Andis educator, they had given to me as a gift for Christmas, and it's my one of my favorite. <laughs> uh, I love Supreme. Um, I, I do love my Supreme colors. Cool. All right then. So what I'm now going to be doing is I'm now going to be working with a closed blade system. So I'm going to be using my fade brush, making sure, and then I will be taking it up higher here, taking this off. Now I will be working then, like I said, that's an open blade. Just taking this off in the back here. There we go. Now a lot of times if he's got a dip, stretch the neck. Kind of clean this up here. Going against the natural growth pattern. Hello from Bucharest, Romania. Oh wow, hello there. Cool, and then what we're then going to be doing is we're going to be done doing the Leaving that we're gonna do the top in a moment. So right now, I'm gonna finish off. You see, I'm gonna go back through the number system. So we have an open one. Okay, an open one. And what I'm doing is going back and forth. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going back and forth, lending this out. Then close one. Christiana Cora says, hi, Sarah. Uh, ciao, ciao, Chayoni. <laughs> so Christiana Cora is a famous hairdresser in New York City. He was my art director at Vida Sassoon, so he's one of my favorite, favorite hairdressers in the world. So I've been honored to have the privilege of, to be under his guidance and mentorship throughout my, the beginning, early stages of my career. Very grateful for what that man has given me. So a big shout out to him. Will you be visiting him? I'm sorry? Will you be visiting him? Well, yes. So, myself and Jennifer, we're going to be on the East Coast of America in July, where hopefully we're going to be teaching um, a few courses in New York and also in New Jersey. So, yeah, so we're going for a work, uh, work holiday vacation. It's actually Jennifer's uh, 30th birthday. <laughs> so, yeah, so hopefully. Yeah, so hopefully if I'm able to see Cristiano or any of you, that'd be absolutely brilliant. So, you'll be up for the party, Jen, right? Mm -hmm. Jen will be taking gifts on that trip, so. <laughs> okay, so now what I'll be doing is going into, I have my zero, I have my zero attachment comb, and that's a 1.5 millimeter. But what I'm gonna do first is do an open blade, Then I'm gonna close it.
Miss Jenner says, I'm proud of you and your energy. Keep up. <laughs> well, I've had a very large coffee today, so. <laughs> more than one. Yeah, more than one. <laughs> But yeah, it's been a it's been a beautiful Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry, Christmas. It's <laughs> Easter. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant. So it's you know absolutely loved it. Beautiful day here in Edinburgh, Scotland. And then we're like I said, like tonight after the live video, we have to get everything ready for our barbering foundation course starting tomorrow. And then we will be doing um, also an intermediate barbering course later this week as well. So yeah, so my next live video um, is next month here on Hairbrains, and I will be showcasing a step-by-step -step wet shave, so a full wet shave for the video, so it's going to be really exciting. So, now what I'm doing is, so the transition, so going through now using the open blade of my clipper and I do it almost like point cutting just kind of going over the corners here now by doing that okay you're kind of softening the edges there we go and working with the color so Then I'm just going to be doing a little scissor combing. Then we're going to be taking down the top. I will be going back over to my fade at the end of the haircut, uh, or when I'm done with the top. It's just that I still have a lot of stuff to do with this type of look here. I want to make sure it's perfect, not just for you, but also for Nathaniel. So when he goes to work tomorrow, he looks like a million bucks. So. Uh, once again, so we're working with the fade. You can do a variety of different, if you need to reduce, you can use your scissors. Kind of, if you keep them flat against the head, by keeping them, you can work with point cutting there. So, oh, do I have hair on my face? Yeah, that's right. That's it. It's my mustache. <laughs> Extension of the mustache. Extension of the mustache. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. Are there any questions, Jennifer? Anything I need to know? Um, no, no questions. It's a very quiet group tonight. I know. They must be uh, hung over on all the uh, sugar from the Easter eggs, uh, the mm -hmm. chocolate and all the sweets. Like I said, I will go back over the fade, make sure it's perfect for Nathaniel, uh, but I'm gonna do that just because I'm on a little time frame here. I'm going to be bringing down the disconnection. Um, Susma Lavinia asks if that's a taper blade. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, and Susma is asking if that's a taper blade? Question mark. Yeah, so right here, if I show you. Okay, so we have the ones that I'm using. Okay, so the, the Andis Cordless Master, if you see, is more of like a beveled blade. Um, now the US Pro Cordless, this one here, it's the same thing, a beveled blade, but if you see, it's a little bit more smoother. All right, so it's a beautiful blade, which I strongly recommend. Um, but they, uh, they're both beveled, so um, they're both absolutely brilliant. So, sorry, So they're absolutely both brilliant. So depending, uh, you also now, uh, this one here, this one's called the Andis, okay? So this is called the Fat Blade. So this is great, especially, so this is gonna be taking about, when you use this blade, if you see the width, which is about six millimeter, um, which is basically a number two attachment comb. So, and it also has the extension arm, the lever here, where you can make it even larger. So these are great, especially if you're doing a lot of clipper work, if you're working with a lot of um, very short hairstyles. So these are actually really great to use, these ones here. So this is a, a totally different blade. Uh, this one was actually given to me and this, and from Andis personally, even has my logo on there, onto the metal cordless master. So. 
that was one of my highlights, uh, which I had received a couple, couple well, about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, but overall, depending what type of clipper blade uh, you want to use, um, would be depending on the type of job you're trying to achieve. Usually, the bevel blade works great for everything, especially your bulk removing work. Um, I'll use that, especially when I'm using my clipper or comb um, removing technique. So. Okay, so what I'm now going to be doing is I'm going to be using just a little bit of a leave-in conditioner spray. Now, the reason why it's... Uh, oh, it's got one. Um, you'll see what I'll be doing. Uh, just spraying a little bit of leave-in conditioner just to keep my sections moist and also a little bit of water right afterwards. So I want to put condition into the hair especially to keep the hair very bit more acidic and uh, you'll see just uh, especially with these studio lights I want to keep the hair um, I'll be trying to keep it as wet as possible during my sectioning so what I'll be doing okay, if you see here definitely keeping um, this is going to keep this longer, but I think it still needs to be a little bit trimmed up here. So, what I'm actually going to be doing, so I'm going to be creating a bit of a triangle shape. So that means going from shorter in the back to longer in the front. Okay, but the way I want to do this is, so I'm actually going to be using pivoting sections. Okay, so using that as almost a pivot point right here in the crown. So going from shorter, then going to longer. So I will be working with over direction here. The reason why is because once again, this is the heavier side where he likes to keep the hair coming a little bit over. And that's why I need to work with over direction to the middle. So working with a pivoting sectioning technique. And you'll see the cutting line will be going from shorter to longer. There we go. So I'm going to have to slowly lower the chair because the thing is pretty tall. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So once again, I'm just using leave-in conditioner spray. And working. So my first section, like I said, I will be using the crown as a guide. So working here first, I'm going to be working over my fingers. and working from shoulder to longer. Here we go. Okay, so now, if you see, I'm actually keeping him a little bit more to myself, and the reason why is because then it's a little bit more easier for when I need to over direct. So I will be over-directing it just to the previous section. Still working over my fingers, working from shorter to longer. Okay. So my next section, you'll see, I might start doing almost like subsections. Meaning, in order to get that curve, I will be kind of pivoting off that way. Anisha, I think she means, do you use the back as a guide? Um, well, you'll see, not necessarily. I mean, um, with the way I, I do apologize, Anisha, I actually worked with that uh, visually myself. Um, so because afterwards, well, uh, you'll see I'm gonna, we're gonna work with that, keeping that square. So you'll see I'm gonna go like this when I'm done with the back to maintain a bit more fuller shape for his crown area. So what I did was before, I actually quickly envisioned, I knew kind of in a way what this length was here and I literally used that as a guide. So. So I was able to, with my experience, be able to take a look visually 
not so much technically, and then choose that to be my guide. So I've worked very visually. So in this case here, what I'm doing here is that, here we go. So it's not a lot, too much coming off in this area. Now if you see, let's turn them around this way. Now I'm actually going to be using a section clip just to show uh, the sections a little bit easier. Is that okay? Um, I know sometimes we don't necessarily use clips in barbering, but uh, I think nowadays with barbering, anything goes, so it's okay. <laughs> You see it going from shorter to longer. There we go. In this case here, you'll see my elbow will control my angle. So if I, depending on where you keep your elbow. So if you, there we go. I want to keep this Right here, if I want to keep that angle steep, my elbow's up in the air. If I want to keep it less steep or square, I keep it here. If I want to round it off, my elbow's down here. So depending what type of shape, if you're doing triangular, my elbow's up. If I want to keep it square, my elbow is almost even. And if I want to round everything off, like which is taking a lot off, I don't want to do that, my elbow will be down here. So your elbow placement will determine especially the type of shape you will have on the top. Now for some of you maybe getting into hair cutting or you're starting off maybe in cosmetology school, the definition of a triangle shape is that it's shorter in the back, longer in the front. So if you're a gentleman or, or a lady client has a long fringe and it's shorter in the back, that means they have a triangle shape. So hopefully that makes a little sense there. And this is great, especially here in the UK. We get a lot of guys with the more longer fringes and shorter on the back and sides, so. There we go, so keep this in. From shorter to longer. And you'll see what I'm also gonna be doing is I was going to be working with a bit of texturizing as well. Like I said, I'm just going to use a little leave-in conditioner spray. Okay, he's got that little, it's a little bit, kind of a little bit too long over here. So I'm actually just gonna over direct it towards myself and just take that little bit of, yeah, there we go. Kind of just really seeing, there we go. And you see what I'm gonna be also doing is I wanna flatten this down a tiny bit more here. And I'll be doing that with a little bit more like clipper over comb, so, but yeah. Now in this case here, what you can also do because of Nathaniel's growth pattern going this way, what I might actually do here, right in the fringe area, I'm gonna be just taking this little, you see, there we go. So what will happen is that's gonna help, kind of help keep it off to the side for him. Yeah, which is good. And you know what I like about doing, you know, especially doing the fade first and then playing around, it kind of gives, uh, like, it gives me an idea about, like, you know, I can actually take a look at, you know, see the way the fade has developed and give my eyesight a bit of a break here. So, now in the back, all I'm doing is, hopefully this will help uh, with Anisha here. All I'm doing is, just, since I want to maintain it square in the back, 
I'm taking sections across the head like so and over directing back and just taking that nice and square. And just see if there's any bit that I need to reduce. So if you need to, you can work over your gentleman, okay? Tilting him forward and working over your fingers to maintain that square shape as well. Okay, so keeping that long, and then what I'm now gonna do is, I'm gonna be applying just a little bit of um, like a sea salt spray in the hair, then I'm gonna be drying off the top, working with almost like a finger drying technique. So he still has a bit of like texture to the hair, and it's just a great, great blow drying technique for men. That's something they could do themselves at home, that, you know, just, just working with that in there. So let me get the hair off him first. So how are we doing, Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any questions or anything? Mm -hmm. Are people still watching? Yeah, we're good. Uh, great. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's so nice that, you know, that we're able to hopefully be able to show everyone what we're doing and be able to share our knowledge. And, you know, hopefully that's something that, you know, these, you know, because it, sometimes it's very hard. Um, Especially, it's kind of very hard to, uh, to sometimes I get the hang of like men's work, you know, because it's a lot different than working with um, working with ladies where it's a lot longer, you know, you can sometimes hide mistakes. With barbering, sometimes you, you see everything right away. So right now, I will be reducing that when the hair is dry. There's a little bit too, heavy, too much heaviness right there, so I will be reducing that a little bit. We have a, a good question from Lisa Hart. She, she says, hi from Essex. I'm really enjoying watching this gents cut. And she's asking, is darker hair easier to fade than lighter? Okay. That's a great question. Um, it all kind of like depends because depending on how they're dark, usually if you have a gentleman that's either African Caribbean or um, Asian gentlemen, they tend to only have, of course, their skin tone and one hair color. If the gentleman is Caucasian and they have dark hair, they might have, the, they might have multiple different tones of color through their skin and also the hair. So kind of that all will depends. Now, when you're working on maybe bleached blonde hair, what will happen is you really only have like, mm, almost like skin tone and a very light color. So if you're going the shorter you go, that blonde hair is going to be very non-existent. So in a way, you don't necessarily, necessarily see the face. So yeah, so it's uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Um, now, usually with scissor cutting, uh, what happens is, especially when you're doing like a short rag way of fall, usually blonde hair is definitely harder because you see every mistake. So it kind of like really depends with it. So, usually, uh, you know, blonde hair will always absorb light, while dark hair always, look, always is like a reflector. So, dark hair always looks a bit shinier. Have you seen, the thing has got a little bit of texture to his hair, a bit of like a slight little bit of like, kind of a little wave, and that's why I'm kind of like, I kind of want to work with it. So, just have a bit of fun with that. This is something that, like, especially when you're working with your clients, you know, um, Karen asks, um, so I missed the first part of the haircut, is the fade blended up to a four? Um, no, what I did was kind of worked, I would say number four, um, what we did was we worked, we worked the first attachment, we first used our um, guideline with the scissors, uh, just to, just I showed one of the different ways to do a guideline. Then I actually used the number three attachment comb and went a bit more straighter up, and then working with my baseline in. So yeah, so it depends. Not always you have to do, um, you know, up to a number four, 
Um, so kind of like old pendulary. So a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of guidelines go actually at number two or 1.5, depending on how how short you want to really um, show up with the, with the gentleman. So you know, it all depends on the head shape. So I think really envision where you want to see the fade. And uh, yeah, so of course in, in, in barbering trends, we're starting to see a lot of, uh, a lot of high fades. Uh, the reason why is it just help, helps make the blending a lot easier, because you don't have to worry about so many of the dips or, 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 um, or little bumps in the head. Keep it nice and steady. Just want to climb that down a little bit more. So because well, what will happen is because since I want to flatten down the hair, you'll see primarily I was going across. And when we go across the blade, we tend to do that with layering. Okay, and where exactly is layering on a man's haircut? Layering is anywhere from here upwards. Down below, that's graduation. And so when I want to refine the hair or graduate, I'm actually going to be doing a fanning motion with my clippers. So in this case here, I just want to reduce that a little bit more. Definitely working visual here, with the, working with the clippers, working with the, with the scissors, working with the tools. 
of, of the barber or hairdresser in order to do the job. So there's many different tools. You can use your blending scissors. But yeah, moving along here, so almost I'm gonna see in here that I might just work with a little bit of texture on them. And then you'll see, gonna play around. There we go. And this is just the finishing touches here. So using the wide end of my cutting comb, and I'm gonna be working with point cutting, going in vertical with my blades. Just want to help soften everything here. Lisa is asking how long would this cut take you in the salon, please? Um, I'd say probably you want to shoot for about 40 minutes, it could be 45 minutes. 40, like, I mean, you could do it 45, 30. So depending on what, it all depends on one, how much you're charging. Um, so it depends on where the area you, you, you're working in, how much you're charging. Um, yeah, so if it's, um, it, it really, I'll be honest with you, Lisa, it really depends. So I'd say probably you could do it about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So depends if you're shampooing your gents or not, your customers, your guests. Yeah. yeah, just like kind of how you want to me myself I really like to do attention and detail. So for myself it's just like you know I I've, I've, I've always give that little extra because I love doing hair. I want the haircuts to be perfect for the clients or for the guests. Um, because who's the most important person in the barbershop or hair salon? Does anyone know? Is the returning client so because the thing is you want the clients to keep on coming back and that's something that we teach our students you know especially on our courses uh, on our seminars throughout the world uh, but yeah so there we go so I'm just gonna be you see I'm stirring a tiny bit of slicing into it just kind of really breaking into certain areas um, we could do is you can also just a little bit more this way the reason why I'm going that way is just to really kind of help kick it over for him so yeah and also use your fingers to really help help style enhance so now if we see here it's just a little bit heavy in this long panel here okay so Now, slicing will also will flatten down the shape. There we go. Yeah, there we go. It's gonna need a little more lift just by reducing that weight. Just put it into that fade. So I think we're getting there. So I think I'm gonna to have to finish. I just wanna see how this is going. Do you vote? I just wanna make sure that's hundred percent right there. Okay, so we worked, once again, it was just a, a little bit of disconnection on the sides, and we were kind of seeing how that's kind of like working with a little blend, and you know, the way I approached it, so working from shorter to longer, so 
the sections I took were from, I started here on this side, because he likes to wear it this way, going from shorter to longer, and what I did was I used that as a pivoting point, but each section was over-directed a little bit more further over towards the middle. That's how we try to keep as much weight and length on the sides there. So, let me just see here. And I'm just gonna use a bit of styling cream. Actually, no, a bit of texturizing spray. How much would you normally charge for a haircut suit? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I, I, I tend to just do free haircuts for my mates or for my models, uh, for my students, so I don't even know how much I charge. Uh, I think it, 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 it kind of like all depends on where I'm working, you know. Um, I, do, I do actually own barbershops in Leicester, so uh, um, I do own barbershops. Um, so I think, I think the last time I was there, I think I was charging like 60 or 70 quid. Uh, so it kind of like all depends, so. But I tend to like, I, I really don't get a chance to, uh, I need to be going down back down to Nottingham where I do have a little bit of a clientele down there, um, which I will be, uh, I know I still have to look at, go down there. I'll be going down there in, uh, I believe I'm, I'm going down to Nottingham uh, to do some clients and to teach in, in, in a couple of weeks. So looking forward to that, so. Now I'm just using the trimmers, and then, like I said, then in World Windows, we're gonna just talk about the, the actual, um, talk about the fade again, we'll recap, and then yeah, so I hope everyone enjoyed what we we're doing tonight. That is just, just to let everyone know, that's just a 0 0.5 attachment pin. Okay, so just a little texture spray. Like I said, depending on my, you know, you use a white, you can use a little bit of putty, you use like a little powder, depending on what you're into. I want to kind of create more like a dry finish to the hair. Yeah, so here we go. So you can even play around with like putting the hair into various places or using a little bit of cream to piece it out. The choice, the choice is yours. You know, you can have a lot of fun with that. So cool. All right then everyone. So thank you very much. Uh, once again, I had approached this hairstyle, just a bit of a recap. I used uh, my scissors to create more of like a guideline first, working with a bit of a horizontal section. Then I used my number three attachment cone, working with more of my arm movement. Then I continued with my guideline there. Then I used my zero, which is no blade whatsoever, I'm sorry, no attachment cone on a closed setting, working with the skin fade. Then I used that as my baseline, and then I worked with my blending. So I actually used an open one, closed one, Open uh, 0.5 attachment comb, close 0.5 attachment comb, and open zero attachment comb, then close and an open blade just to work with the fading. So going back and forth just to really polish it off. Uh, once again, I did work with the outline first just to establish working with the front hairline, then working with a little scissor combing and a little clipper of a comb, so and uh, texturizing scissors. So. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoy. Are there any last minute questions or anything there, Jen? Um, just a few people saying thank you. There's Katrina saying thank you, Sid and Jen. 